Hi, I'm Tim May, and this is my family farm, a thousand hectares in the North of Hampshire. This is a typical lowland farm based around arable crops, winter wheat, spring barley, oilseed rape. Those sort of crops are very chemical dependent, so we're using chemical fertilisers and um, pesticides, fungicides, all the other acides that modern agriculture is requiring us to use. The main disadvantage is that it's damaging the soil and so we're in a situation where every year we've got to keep on spending more money to get the same yields. The results of this chemical style of farming has been that we've eroded the natural capital by depleting our soil reserves, we've depleted food around for the wider food chain. And so I've decided to farm in a totally different way. And this is what's going to change things. A lot of people would think this is a flowery meadow, but I call it a herbal lay. I think it's going to revolutionise the countryside. But there's one missing player in this exciting future. In fact, there's lots of them. Come on, it goes! It goes! It goes! It goes! <laughs> I remember when I was young on the farm, there were people everywhere. We had a lot of pigs and a lot of dairy cows, as well as the crops. So what are we loading up here then, Toby? And there was 17, 18 odd people working on the farm. Who's, Who's driving the tractor? Me? When I came back to the farm in 2004, uh, me. there were just two or three people working on the farm. Now, who's going to drive the combine? And that was because we'd sold all of our animals, so there were no animals at all, and we were only growing crops. So what's happened to this then? It's just failed, really. This was supposed to have been a wheat crop. We had a really low vigour, I think, in the seed, and the, and the soil got very cold very early. But over the winter, it eventually died. So I decided to take a closer look to see what was going on underground. To diagnose the problem, I called in the most knowledgeable soil expert I know. His name is Mike Harrington, and he spends his life working on fixing damaged soils. Is that big enough, Mike? <laughs> what worries me is it's filling up with water. <laughs> I've never, never done this before. I've never opened up my soil like this. When he had a look at our ground, really he had some worrying news. A big concern nowadays is that as we're losing organic matter in this surface area here and the, the life of the soil is depleting, we're finding actually we're moving this subsoil progressively up to the top of the, yeah. of the, of the soil surface. And what we I said, all need to think about really is that when we stand yeah. on a field, yeah. we're standing on the rooftop of another world and it's a living world. Yeah. And what we're doing is we've been gradually taking away the infrastructure and the whole thing is starting to collapse. Yeah. This was the wake-up call we needed. The chemical methods we were using here, were damaging our soils, our crops, our wildlife and our profits. I knew there had to be a better way to grow our food. There is. And these are the characters that are going to help. I found that we need to reintroduce the animals back onto the farm, using grazing animals as a tool to recuperate the soil. The essence of the system is we're going to have a four-year block of pasture and then a four-year block of crops. And those four years of cropping will be benefited because of the pasture producing a lot more nutrition into the system. So today is my, my weekly check day. I'll go around and monitor the whole farm and see what's going on. Every week I measure the amount of grass that's grown from week to week. That's really important so I know how much grass I've got to feed my animals. I do this using a special tool that I call a plonker. So what we're doing here is measuring the grass. Now this grass here isn't ready to, to be eaten. We could just put animals back onto the farm as was done in the past. Right, so that's 2,474. Last week it was 2,140. It's about 300 kilos of growth in the last week. That's not too bad. But some of the research that I've been looking at and some of the guys I've been working with would suggest mob grazing or holistically planned grazing. And the concept is we let the grass get quite tall and by having a tall plant above the ground that should mean we've got a, a big root mass below the ground. This grass is getting pretty much to the top. There's no more for it to grow really now. 
<laughs> and then we bring the animals through. Yeah. So most farmers would say that this is too far gone. It's gone to seed, it's all stemmy. But for me, it's about right. What I want, I want the, the animals, the cows, to be eating this leafy stuff and to be leaving this stemmy stuff behind. And if we can get that fibre back into the soil using earthworms and, and the fact that the animals tread that stuff into the ground, then we can build carbon from the top. And that's how we can improve our soils quicker than, than just saying, let's just put a few cows out in the field and let them wander around all year. This field's about perfect now for the cows to come in tomorrow. And that's what's going to happen. And they're going to get in here and, and have a whale of a time. We love these flowers, the red clover flowers. They're really sweet. The other benefit of letting these grasses go long and having lots of different species within these grass fields is that we're having much more flowering going on. It's an actual mission that we want the red clover to put its flower out. We want the white clover to flower. And when they're flower, they become a much better habitat. And that's a real fantastic side benefit to the way that we want to farm anyway. I hope that there's going to be a massive increase in the amount of wildlife around. But really, the, the only way we can find that out is to monitor it. So, Alice, what have we noticed? Well, I think we're starting to get a, a really good understanding, actually, of, of what you've got here. Bumblebees, earthworms, birds, yeah. beetles. So lots of different types of birds? Yeah, or? 55 different species, right. ranging from red kite, which, of course, not so long ago was, was really rare, uh, right down to things like the, the linnet. Right. Um, linnet is one of the 19 birds on the farmland bird indices. Okay. It's an index which is used to monitor um, how farmland birds are doing across the country. Okay. So those birds on that index are really important because they tell us a lot about the state of birds how, on how farmland. Got on you've got 14 index. of 14. the 19. So you've got good diversity. Yeah. That's great. What's been the most impressive animal that we've seen so Certainly far? Certainly the biggest changes that we've seen have been in the earthworms. Is that right? The earthworms. I think you're, you're hidden heroes, the earthworms. And we've oh. seen some really positive results. That's what I like, is all that root mat yeah. on the surface. Yeah. I mean, it's, there's one. one. Right. Oh, there's one there. I've got... That's two in a trowelful. And another one there. They are endogeic mm -hmm. worms and they live just underneath the soil surface and they make horizontal burrows. They're sort of dragging things down into the, the top and then you get the anisic worms and they're the big fat worms that you sometimes see on lawns and they would drag the material down and certainly in some of the grassland fields. This year we've had a fourfold increase. From year one from to year now. From year one to now. It just shows that you've got a healthy living soil and I think you know for so many years we've just been damaging our soils. You know we're wanting to get food from it mm. and yet we've just been damaging them so badly so the more of these little guys we can actually get back there the better and everything that you're doing here it's just creating it's ideal right conditions way, for them definitely but the real test of the system is whether we're seeing improvements in the soil the pasture has only been down for three years but might there have been an improvement already there's only one person to ask mike harrington and guess what he needs another hole I think it is, isn't it? Yeah. Wow, what have we got down here then, Mike? Well, the very first thing is this dark area here, which is growing and developing. Before, you probably just had an area of rooting in this top mm. couple of inches. You had a, a very tight soils, a bit like concrete. Yeah. You know. Now we're accessing, we're down to here, and even down to here, look, this has changed dramatically. You can see um, roots now, almost, what did we talk about? A good metre and a half. It is, isn't it? Yeah. And into this, into yeah. actually what, it's actually quite heavy clay. Most of these root systems will have probably followed wormholes. The worm leaves a much higher level of nutrition behind right. it, so roots are naturally going to utilise that easy method of moving down. And we're getting these earthworms coming all the way down here, and the roots coming all the way down here, and it looks really positive. So if we take roughly half the energy that these plants produce, is exuded out of its root system, and with the mob grazing type principle, you're pushing back in organic material, yeah. which then is a food source again for microbes. And we've actually started feeding the soil. We've got a much better connection all the way through the profile, even into these deeper subsoils. Mm. 
And so we yeah. can get more out of this soil than you could when you had your old intensive system. Biology is really what it's all about. We farm with chemicals, we can get good crops off poor biological systems, but not forever. And what we've done with Tim's new system is given nature an opportunity to rebalance. What's amazing is how quickly nature can react yeah. in the right circumstances. It's reconnecting soil and plants. And what we're doing in intensive agriculture, it, in actual fact, is disconnecting soil and plants. For the future of farming, this really has to become as big a part of the picture as anything else. The implications for this system working for other farmers are huge. Carnicos! 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 Instead of us thinking as a business, we've got to go and make profit and then, you know, doff our hats a bit to the environment. Carnicos! All of a sudden, we're creating a business that, by the very nature of how it forms, is supporting the environment. And at the same time, it's allowing the animals to be the animals. So the welfare of those animals is much more natural. They're being treated in a way that respects their pigginess or their chickenness. It's allowing cows and sheep to move herds from one piece of ground onto the next. It's allowing the grass to grow how grass should grow, to be periodically grazed and then rested for a long time. Everything's there and it's all happening in a brilliant, uniform way, sort of holistic is the, the sexy way of, of put, putting this. The system that Tim is involved with matters for the future of farming because we're going to create a food source which is higher in nutrition and more sustainable within the whole system of agriculture. We need ambassadors like Tim, somebody that's been brave enough to do something which is really quite radical. And I think this type of farming where we're seeing big areas of pasture, that's really looking at farming at the landscape scale. And if we can link it up with what other neighbours are doing as well, then that's the way forward for a sustainable farming future. But how is this going to take from my farm into every other farm? The consumers can say, well, this is the sort of farming we want and go and look for it and demand it. Or the farmers can realise that this is a, a cheaper system, a more reliable system, more resilient system, a system where instead of just being an applicator of chemicals, you're you're a nurturer of a, a natural system, it's much more rewarding. And I can't see why it can't compete with any other farming model. And let's put the fun back into my farming. I think it's really exciting.